Testing, one, two. Yeti mic, Raphone. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, let's try this bad boy. Have a big monitor in OBS. Maybe. I was gonna put it. I guess I can put me here. That'll be less intrusive. There we go. Yeah, that works. That should work. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. No clue. I was going to be editing anyways tonight, so I figured might as well uh, go live and uh, see how this works out. We will see. Oh, you guys hear it? All right, bet. Today, uh, I am actually in the middle of an editing session. I just got this blue mic, so I'm really excited to try this. I'm in the middle of an editing session. I figured, whoa, man, DP is always fired here. I got stuff on the way. I uh, ordered a couple you know, things for stream, but as of right now, I kind of built some guerrilla filmmaking. Got my Insta360 <laughs> with the uh, aperture light on top of it, but it works. Just not as well as I thought it would. Gorilla streaming. Gorilla streaming. So please excuse me, guys. I'm just uh, first, second time ever doing this. I try to I try to download the app OBS for my phone um, to use my phone as a web browser, but it didn't work. So hopefully soon I will be uh, learning how to do that. Can you, you guys can hear the mic? It's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah? All right. True cinema. What up? Yeah, right? Like, somebody, like, just help me, guys. Like, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn your guys' ways. <laughs> I have no idea how to work this thing. What up? So, it's the intro of the video right now. Yo, go to YouTube, Matt Alonzo, YouTube slash Matt Alonzo Live. And you can see my timeline. You can see my timeline. True Cinema is, uh... yeah, oh yeah, no, that's what, that's exactly why I wanted to test it at this time. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, you can see my uh, timeline online on YouTube. I'm actually editing, and I wanted to give it a try. So I don't want to do this at prime time and then everybody and then not know anything I'm doing. So I'm pancaking my. Uh... Yeah, for sure. The song's called Weed Man. Uh, all the song's called All Night, and basically. Um, yeah, it's, it's Demrick and Dizzy Wright, and uh, I did the video pretty much exactly as the song um, lyrics go, and that's uh, waiting for the waiting for the weed man. So I did a lot of cool camera tricks here with this one. Um, you know, I did a lot of different uh, frame rates, not only shutter speeds, but frame rates. So. So I have a couple things here that I shot in 120 frames per second, which are going to be the 500 blue, blue labeled there, right? And then uh, this one here, which is 197 percent, that one was shot at 12 frames per second, um, and the song was slowed down, right? And you get that. With a real clip, looks like this. 
So this is what the real clip looks like. Yo, go to YouTube, Matt Alonzo. Come, 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 come hang out. Matt Alonzo. Yeah, see? That works. Yeah, that's, that's awesome camera. Awesome camera. True cinema. Yeah, any camera is actually an awesome camera. As long as you can, um, you know, as long as you go, go in on with it. Yo, go to YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. You can see my timeline. Boom, here's the intro. I'm just starting to work on it now. Bam. <laughs> I made really low res proxies of this stuff. There he goes, the intro. Go to YouTube's. Hey. And then, uh, and this is kind of how I, how I edit, you know? I'm gonna go here. I've been waiting on the weed, man, since you text me back what you need, fam. That was 3.30 p.m. Okay. So some of the stuff I just kind of threw in there. It's a pretty funny move. But... Bro, I gotta... Camera and oh lord, there was so much other stuff, right? I mean, that's the that's the thing, man. That's why I got a Sony A7S uh, two. I just before that I had an A6300. I shot music videos on that. I mean, for for my big music videos or bigger music videos, I rent cameras. You know, I'll rent the actual camera, and um, I won't. Uh, I you know, for me, it's just not worth it um, because so many new cameras come out constantly, and you know, there's a lot of new DPs and new filmmakers who have cameras, and um, we want to gain some experience on um, on set, so it's kind of a win-win for everybody. What up, yo? Go to YouTube slash Matt Alonzo Live, and you can see my freaking timeline. I think so, anyways. Yeah, you can. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you can actually see my timeline. And I'm editing on one monitor today. I, I normally edit on two, but um, the way that they're set up, it's a little weird. So, bam. <laughs> so I'm gonna... Why do I have two timelines? YouTube, Matt Alonzo. Uh, why do I have two, li two timelines? Okay, so these, this, this top timeline here, is, it's, uh, if you notice, it's called Sync. Um, and this one I'll actually sync, cut, right? This one I'm gonna close, that's my reference one. What up, go to Matt Alonzo. And so this right here is all my synced up performances, okay? The top one's just my synced up performances. The bottom one here is all night edit one. This is my actual edit timeline, all right? And so what I do is as I'm, as I'm, as I'm going through here, Bam, I have, a, I, have a, I have a gap there. So what I'll do is normally I'll just uh, you know, do that. Then I'll grab my, my, my time code here. I'll, I'll copy it. I know it's a little, I, w I wish the actual, I wish um, Premiere had a thing where it would actually you know, align your cursor with the top timeline so that it didn't, you didn't have to do this one step, any clicks that you can get. So then, bam, I go into here. This, these are all my actual synced clips. And why I don't like to cut in here because then it gets really messy and you're not really working on tempo anymore. And, um, you know, it, you can just go through it and just, you know, make a bunch of uh, cuts um, in your selects. But sometimes, you know, so then I go here, I check out this one here, boom. I'm like, all right, cool, that one's all right, bam. So I'll, I just kind of get that one in my mind. But I'll go through all of them. I won't just, you know. So let's just say for, for right now, we'll go like this. Boom, boom, we'll mute that guy. We'll try this one here, okay? So, guys, go to YouTube, Matt Alonzo Live, and uh, you see my timeline. You can see what I'm working on and uh, join, join along. So then I, I'll add this guy in here, right? Bam, something like this. That was 3 p.m., now you snap. And that's where we go. That was 3 p.m., now you snap with his 
This uh, premiere is 2019. I don't like 2020 because it's been it's been crashing on me for some weird reason, and I'm sure people can relate. I have no idea. I have an old ass computer, man. That's why I make proxies. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, you know. I got other things to spend my money on, and I know how to work, use these tools very well. Yes, I'm going to buy a new computer eventually, but um, I'm in no rush. But uh, 2020 uh, Premiere Pro has been just just been crashing. Like, I mean, not that this one doesn't. This one crashes pretty pretty religiously as well. So, yo, if uh, Adobe is watching this, which they have already uh, talked to them, but uh, and I wasn't, wasn't interested in any of their tutorials that they wanted to teach me because it, the, the hardware itself, it just drains your computer. So it really, really, really fucks, 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 fucks shit up. Freaks shit up. Hopefully that they don't have this song. Um, actually, it might, that the song might not work on YouTube. Go to YouTube's. Sorry, I'm just gonna end the uh, Instagram live. I was just trying to tell everybody who wants to uh, who wants to watch my my editing. Yeah, see, so that doesn't work too well. So we'll go like this. We'll extend this one. This one I like. This one right here was actually the Insta360 camera. Boom, Insta360. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a huge file, man. It's a freaking huge file. And uh, you know, I don't really like to use that one. After I, I'll export one and then, you know, you can actually do camera moves inside the actual app itself. But if you come here, we'll kind of, you know, I'll do some of this stuff just for. So we'll go, bam, right, right there with the hit. We'll go to like 145. Bam, right? And then we'll go. Okay, and then we do a little. Okay, let's just see. Nope, too slow. Hmm, bam. Bam. Too slow. Oh, sorry guys, I'm gonna clip underneath that. If anyone knows how to make the cursors match up, please let me know. Uh, no, two timelines doesn't doesn't really ever seem to do that. I would love to. Um, yeah, one of my buddies let me borrow a Hackintosh, and he told me do not update it or don't update the iOS or whatever. Sure enough, first thing I did when I opened the, when I, when I turned on the computer was, oh yeah, up, I should update this thing. Uh, how to film videos with high frame rate. What, what do you mean high frame rate? Oh, uh, 120 frames? So I shot some of these shots at 120 and you just need to uh, adjust your shutter, your shutter speed. Sometimes the lighting, so sometimes certain lighting has, uh, has shutter issues. So, if you, uh, you know, you can change that. And, and that's the, well, actually when I shot this first video, let me see, I might have a, I might have a shot of it. Let me see. So when I shot this video, whoa, I don't want you guys looking at all my, all my stashes, I'm kidding. I'm actually very, very organized, uh, hard drive wise. I'm just trying to. So when I shot, bam! Here I'll show you. Yep, got it right here, guys. So check this out. My first stuff was like this. See, see the rolling shutter. See the rolling shutter, definitely there. And then this one, I was testing it out with my uh, my gaffer. Shout out to Slide. Sylvester Rios. You hear me talk at the shutter. 200 shutter. 320. He had these awesome light bulbs too. All these uh, all these lights were on a remote. It was pretty awesome. And then he turned them all the way up. Once he turned the lights all the way up, and that's that's really cool. I love that. That's a that's a one over four four fourth shutter. So we were trying to figure out what it was, but then eventually I got it. Boom. So just do that. Adjust that. Adjust, you know, adjust your adjust your shutter speed. You know, that'll be your. 
Um, what do you, I mean, I never get, so let's see. So this shot here, let's see, is it this take? Let's see, not that take, but uh, this take? This take. So this take right here, number 38, is at uh, 250 or 3, 320 shutter. Okay. 320, one over 320 shutter. I mean, the only thing is it's gonna be harder to pull focus. You're gonna lose a lot of light, but your camera moves look really, really, uh, really exaggerated. Now, if you want a smooth shot, don't use this shutter speed because you'll see everything, you know? See, this was high as well. Okay. And I'll show you a, yeah, I'll show you a behind the scenes really quick where you'll see it. Check this out. I did one where? So right here. So this top one is at a shutter of one over 50. This bottom one here, one over 250. So there's no flickering, right? No flickering, but every little, every little, little shake you can see. So, but at the same time, also every move is over animated and I just really like that. I like the way that looks, you know? Let's see. Oh, this is the one from today. Where are you? My fault. I didn't press record. I'm over here. Uh, kids. That's all me. Happens to the best of us. So check this out. 12 frames per second. I was just messing around trying to try this. And I was like, I couldn't move the camera. That was the bad thing. But yeah, shutter speed, you won't get too much, too much, too, too many issues as far as flickering. You know? Legit question though, what do you want, what do you do when people can't afford your services and you can't afford to move, to move anywhere else? Um, well, the thing is that you don't need to move for work. I mean, there's nowadays, like there's work everywhere in every state, you know? And there's big artists or, or there's, there's, there's avenues for, um, you know, in every state. It just, the thing is, it might not be exactly what you want. So I would suggest to, like when I first moved out to LA, I moved out here via a, a record company, but uh, quickly they folded and, you know, the owner of the record label's first prim primary uh, way of income, excuse me, was a uh, infomercial. Uh, he, had, he had a bunch of um, vitamins and colon cleanses. So once the record label folded, because it was just a side hustle, I, I started doing infomercials. I was making good money, but it was, it was you know, Oh, it was treacherous, but uh, you know you put a little bit of that money away, and then uh, and then if you're young enough, you know you take you take a you take a you take a leap, and then you know go see uh, take a leap and uh, see what happens, you know. After, but um, but yeah, you gotta say no. You just gotta say no, and uh, you know when I was um. After I left Ski Ski TV, you know, and, and you know, Ski wanted to continue doing, you know, more DJing stuff and marketing and really get into the radio stuff. So I, you know, I really wanted to focus on, you know, I was signed with ICM, and then I really wanted to just kind of master my music videos because at the time we didn't really have anybody there showing, you know, helping me. And, and you know, we had producers, Mike, shout out to Mike, Kelvin, everybody, Karen. But uh, but once I left, I got a music video rep, uh, Jamie, um, Con Rabino, um, over at Lark, and then. I, Taro Razavi was my EP um, at Happy Place that do all Tyler the Creator stuff, and they told me originally when I like when I when I signed with them like we're not going to do any video you're not going to do any videos under fifty thousand so I was like oh no like I'm never going to get a video it took a little bit of time but uh, eventually you know people people came knocking so um, you know but first I had to establish my worth so you know five hundred bucks I know from the same client you can't do it you know um, but. Uh, you know, I would I would suggest really 
tightening your skill. I mean, I've been doing this, I've been filming and editing since I was seven, you know, uh, two VCRs. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're in filmmaking for the money, it's going to be tough unless you're like, you know, Jacob Owens or some one of these dudes who comes from money and then you can, you know, you just want to like do like a factory line type stuff as opposed to like artwork, you know, but cause it's, it's an art, you know, you're an artist and yes, some artists make money, but you know, majority of artists are praised once they're, you know, long gone or, or their work, um, you know, uh, lives on. So money early on, I would say, use your skills to do some boring ass work, corporate type shit, usually. And uh, definitely just do that, bam. So what do I got here, I wanna, I wanna do a little zoom in. I, I, so what I do is I, I, uh, I pan and scan pretty much all my shots. And this started early on. Um, one of my, um, one of my uh, good friends. He was a uh, steady. He was a steady cam operator. He was learning steady cam early on when I first got here. And uh, he wasn't. He wasn't that great as, with framing. So I, I, I learned early on how to pan and scan every shot. <laughs> like you're a jerk and tie me down and turn my swag on. All those are pan and scan. <laughs> so bam. So we'll go like that. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. But don't get frustrated with that, you know? Like, you, like and, and the thing is that you have to establish your worth first, just like any other artist or like anybody, you know? Like like Drake, even Drake, like no one was calling Drake when he first started rapping it. Why do you think he had to put so many free mixtapes out? You know, before people even got on him like that. Anybody, whether in, in any sort of field, when you play sports, you gotta go through high school, you gotta, you gotta get buzz going, you know, you gotta have a highlight reel, you gotta have the skill for people to actually want to recruit you, you know? And uh, what you wanna do is make yourself a commodity, make yourself, make your work so dope that they want it and they want it by uh, whatever, you know, whatever boundaries you're gonna set for yourself as far as price-wise or whatever. And, um, and if they want your, if they want your work that bad, they'll, they'll come to you. I mean, you got, think about it. I even get the same shit. Like I get people like, well, that that's a high budget, you know, because uh, you know, video creator one hundred and one, you know, and I, Instagram said that they'll do the video for three hundred dollars. Okay, go ahead. Why are you still talking to me then? You're wasting time, dude. Go go call them. And uh, it's just a, a lot of times it's just a bluff, man. They just want to see like where you're at. Because if they can get it cheaper, why wouldn't they? Right? Bam, we'll go like that. And then we can let's maybe go to the other side. Yeah. And then. Okay. So that one I'll probably cut out. I got that. I'm gonna put some B roll there, right? <laughs> trying to test this live stream thing out man I got my I got my webcam coming this week too so that'd be cool so then what I also got here guys I'll show you I got this one here so this is at 500% so this is at 120 frames okay uh, I, think, I think he performed the beginning parts god dang Demrick he didn't even get his lyrics right another another trick uh, you know, just a little, a little hack. <laughs> I hate the word hack. Life is not about hacks. It's going to be treacherous. It's going to be hard. So if you're looking for the easy way out all the time, shit, it's going to be miserable. But uh, a, a, one, one technique that, that I did learn um, with the artist is do your wide shots first, right? So do your wide shots, um, whatever wide shot you need to get with them actually performing, get. Uh, because a lot of times they're not going to know their lyrics because they record so many records. But if you're wide and their mouths are this big, it doesn't matter, right? And uh, you can get your shots. They learn the song. They still look cool. And then if you have to, if they're just kind of getting the motions, just make sure that they tell them to perform it with their bodies. You know, perform your lyrics with your bodies, even if you don't know them, right? And then you just want to crank your shutter up a little bit and then just kind of sway the camera, move it around and, and add some, add some, uh, some life to it. 
do you do color grade as well? Um, no, I color grade. I, I color grade, I would say like 80 to 90% of my projects right now just due to the budgets, you know, like I, I and due to like the turnaround times. A lot of these people, like this video, I need to get done. Um, I need to have turned into Vivo, I believe, um, by the 22nd, and uh, which is like two days. And uh, which they're not going to premiere, they're not even premiering it until the fir uh, first, I think. So, um, so this one, I just don't have enough time. I've been waiting on the weed, man. It's always hurry up and wait. So let's try, um, you know, this one, these are my. I'm freaking dim. I think that was my fault. Let's go from, we'll go here. I know there's probably another way to do this, but this is the way I do it. Bam. And I'll take the bottom of this, boom. Come back over here. Waiting on the weed, man, since you yeah, that's not the best one. Nah. I'll show you another. I'll show you one more project, actually. This video is coming out soon. Yeah, let's see. I can't see him here. Let's see. But this one's really cool because I shot so many different. Uh, so. Okay. Press shift on the eyes and it'll it'll link them all. It'll close them all. Bam. Okay. Shift on them all. Bam. So let's see. So these ones I brought into Da Vinci uh, the night I, after I shot, and um, I just applied you know gen, a gen, generic LUT on them, and then I exported them as proxies. And these proxies, I mean, are tiny. You're talking like, I think the the, the project file, I mean the uh, the raw footage for this one, since it's uh, you know 3K or 4K or whatever, it's uh, like 70 gigs, right, of raw footage. But then when I converted it to proxies, it was like six gigs. And the reason that I did this is because I'm going to hand this off to another editor and to a visual effects artist and I can put it on a Dropbox, a G drive uh, relatively quickly and, and somebody across the world can download it pretty pretty instantly. They send me back their overlays with a transparent uh, background. Then when I up res all my, my project, I can just overlay that over the top and the job's done relatively quickly. Or if somebody wants to edit it, they can just send me back uh, an XML. I, I plug it into my computer or into uh, DaVinci and reattach it to all the, uh, you know, to the raw footage, the high res footage, and I'm, uh, I'm able to do this, you know, to, to do that as well. So that was like kind of a slow shutter. Slow shutter. Fast shutter. Yeah, difference. I just love fast shutter just because it looks so just so lit. Like, ah. And I try so much shit during throughout my takes. Like I don't really like I, I know in my mind I'm looking to use six seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. So I don't you know. I was putting a little piece of glass over the lens for this one. Like this. Like some. And that was over at 85. Oh no, sorry. 200. 200 milli. That's how I shut it too. That's cool. So yeah, that's kind of what we did there. I like that one a lot. But, <laughs> this one's pretty awesome. All right, I think I'm gonna uh, head out of here, guys. I, I tried it.
and uh, I'll be back soon. I'll definitely be, uh, you know, I'll try this thing again tomorrow when there's actually some people on it. But uh, like I said, I just didn't want to go, I didn't want to not know what I was doing and um, have, you know, 20 people in here. <laughs> I'm out of here. Stay, uh, stay amazing, people. I'll be burning the midnight oil. Anybody else who's up editing, hit me on the on the DM, on the IG, Matt Alonzo. Matt Alonzo everything, Tinder, Bumble, and uh, fans only, or only fans for you females. I'm out. Peace.